Hey everybody, this is Rita Batchley and this is Coffee with the Nurse's Nurse where you'll get tips on how to get the care back in healthcare because it starts with you my friend because you can't give away something you don't got. So taking care of yourself is your number one priority. How to stop being a people pleaser. Like, is that even possible? Because I got to say, I have been a stand and deliver kind of person, but I also have been a people pleaser. We all know that people pleasing is that yes person, you know, that brown noser who is just trying to make everybody happy to self-care. We have to connect with this loving caregiver within us. My people pleaser inside of me is realistic. So I'll give you an example of that. And I worked in labor and delivery and patients would come in. And of course I want to be loving and kind to them. But if, if you come in there with unrealistic expectations of labor, like it's not going to hurt and they're not even in labor yet, like they're just one centimeter, but they're really scared and they're just, they have a lot of questions and tell them, Hey, uh, you got a long haul to go here. Pleasing is a big deal. And the biggest deal about people pleasing right now is the difference between being in crisis mode and being in regular, like quiet mode, I'll call it. So when a patient comes in and they're one centimeter, I'm able to talk to them and reason with them and be in my true self in that place of like, okay, I'm hundred percent focused on this patient and I'm there for you. And we're going to talk about, you know, labor and the expectations and how bad it's going to hurt. And they might be able to hear me at that point, depending on a lot of other factors, of course, their level of maturity, education, all this other stuff. But I think you get the point that when, when we're in a quiet space and we show up in our true north, that's not being a people pleaser in the sense of trying to please you from the outside. I'm pleasing, being pleasing and cooperative from this inner true north of, uh, yeah. But if someone comes in and they're seven centimeters and they're like out of control, screaming and yelling and just like, woo, I mean, I've delivered over, helped deliver over 3000 babies. I know what screaming women are like and being in crisis mode and it's crazy. And I just know, um, I can't reason with someone at that point. I'd say, look at me, look in my eyes where you're okay. Let's breathe together. And I would slow it down and help them rebalance, re capture their equilibrium, their homeostasis, whatever you want to call it, but get back into their own body and be present with what they could and could not do in the situation. What does this have to do with being a people pleaser for you? Well, it has to do with, we teach people how to treat us. When we're, when the hospital's in crisis mode and they're asking you to step it up and to take on more patients, than is like humanly possible. Like if it's, it's a one-time situation, it's different than if it's happening day in and day out. And that's the difference between someone asking for, you know, for you to be a people pleaser when they're one centimeter or when they're seven centimeters or, you know, in total crisis, like the pandemic, or is it like, this is every single day now. And that's what's been happening for the last two years. Nurses have been like battered. Every single day is another crisis with the pandemic and what, you know, what the expectations are at the, at the workplace of, you know, things are slowing down a little bit. We know how to deal with COVID better. People are vaccinated. We're ready to restore some sanity into the workplace. 
And unless nurses step up and stick up for themselves, it's going to be the same business as usual. And I don't mean business pre-pandemic. I mean pandemic business as usual. Because even when the pandemic's gone, business model of paying for a certain amount of staff, be it uh, nursing staff, ancillary staff, they're going to want to keep those conditions because nurses have proved that they could do this. But it's come to this crisis point now where nurses are just done. Nurses are quitting. They're taking travel positions if they can, or they're just, uh, they're just leaving. They're going from one hospital to the next hospital to the highest bidder and so on. And the, the new nurses that are left in training, they're just fresh out of training. They don't have mentors. It's crushing. It's crushing the healthcare system. We got to teach our bosses or administration how to treat us. So stepping it up, we got to get out of the crisis mode. So that means get out of victim mode. So for whatever reason you were doing the overtime and, and a lot of times it's to help each other out, our team, and we're trying to uh, take a hit for our team members. We start to realize that we can't keep going on like that. We have to stop the defensiveness of when we say no, we mean no, and it's a full sentence. We don't have to explain why we can't do another shift. We don't have to explain why we can't do the overtime. Just no. That's not going to work for us. That's not going to work for me. And to really stop making excuses because right away, trying to please everybody, your team, teammates, the hospital, if, if you don't sit by your own true self of like, I'm tired, I can't keep going on like that, this, I need to take care of myself. Because it, it just causes all this resentment to build up and to build up. How do I show this to myself? By making sure I get my 30-minute lunch break. By making sure that I get enough rest. By eating healthy food and planning healthy food and menus and meals so that I'm not just grabbing garbage and trying to sustain myself on that. Use your insurance through your job and go see a therapist to explain what that is. Because if you're unsure about a loving voice inside of you or a true North or your true self, then yeah, then this, we, you got to go back to a basic self-care model, which is seeing a provider to help you decipher what that is, how to hear your own needs and what you're feeling and how to ask for help because it's it's a it's a vicious cycle of um, bullying fear guilt and sadness i felt so angry but once i started to take care of myself i felt what was underneath that anger and there was a lot of fear and i just didn't even know how difficult it was to be a nurse and be in charge of people's well-being. Like that was just a given for me. Suiting up and showing up as a nurse was a very natural, and it was a really good fit for me because I could, could just like, I was a warrior. I just went in there. I could, you know, go for 12 hours, live on that adrenaline and just get the job done. I, you know, and I gotta say, I was a good nurse at the bedside. I'm a great nurse now, but uh, what I did for 30 years, I got to say, I, yeah, uh, I really enjoyed it because I, I really did a lot of good service and helped a lot of people. But I was really angry at the way that the healthcare was being delivered. And, um, and now I'm really kind of sad because I'm seeing the care being sucked 
out of healthcare. It's like running from room to room and being um, bullied by administration, the nurses feeling like they don't have a voice. And that really saddens me. I saw in um, the American Nurses Association, their newest January edition, volume 17, number one of My American Nurse, and it's on AmericanNurse.com. In this um, journal, the nurse, uh, they talk about a pathway to excellence and a framework to combat PTSD. It's a great article and I highly recommend reading it because this is what is going on right now in nursing. The, the pandemic has caused a huge trauma because when all this taking care of uh, the well-being of others and being in charge of life and death situations and feeling powerless over how we do our jobs is caused a lot of trauma in nurses and the nightmares, the anxiety, the panic attacks are real. They are real, my friend. And showing up today to the nurse's nurse, coffee with the nurse's nurse is the first step for you to get tips on how to put that care back into healthcare because it starts with self-care. So reading these journals, talking to a friend, just meeting up with your girlfriends or other nurses at lunch, it, it's really powerful to witness those feelings inside that are inside of you, but to bring them out into the world and have them be heard. And that is what so many nurses say that all they want is to be heard and have a voice in their governance and in the processes of how their job is done and how their needs are met at their job. Because saying what you need and not being a people pleaser, like if you just say, no, I'm not going to, I can't work that extra shift. You can have retaliation. A manager or somebody could make it really difficult for you that you don't get your paid time off, that your, um, that your schedule just gets really messed up. And that's, that's really hard. And as far as how to stop people pleasing, well, is it coming from a place inside of you? Am I trying to please myself or am I trying to please everyone around me? Because you can't make everybody happy. In fact, if you're basing your life around what other people think of you, if you're okay, then yeah, finding that therapist's phone number might be the best option for you. If you can't even tell when, um, how to be truly loving and kind to yourself. But uh, yeah, so if you're always trying to make everybody happy and be that yes person and you don't even know you're doing it, then uh, just understanding the damage you're doing by being a people pleaser, because you're not giving uh, giving other people the opportunity to learn their lessons. Like when we keep saying yes, and they don't hire, they're not going to hire full-time employees because they believe that one nurse is capable of doing the job of two or three nurses. They're not going to spend that money on that nurse. They're going to keep giving you that assignment, those kinds of assignments that that's going to keep you in that crisis, faking it, like pretend in a mirror, like your boss is, is telling you, oh yeah, we just had a sick call. Uh, can, can you work such and such? And you know what, if you're, if you're in truly in victim mode and you're living like from paycheck to paycheck and you're really like suffering 
financially, then, you know, you're going to say yes for other reasons. But if you're just saying it because, you know, one more time, you're just sucking it up or you're just stuck in this vortex of uh, working so you could be numb so that you don't have to feel anything. I mean, there's that, too. So there's a lot of reasons why um, people are people pleasers. So I don't really think we can stop being a people pleaser because a way that you're teaching people to take advantage of you or that you're an easy mark to be taken advantage because you don't know how to stick up for your own true self. Ah, another interesting, the Health Resources and Services Administration, the federal government, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services through HRSA awarded $103 million in American Rescue Plan money to 45 grantees to reduce burnout and promote mental health and wellness to the health workforce. That is you and me, my friend. And you can learn more about it. Uh, I just got this off of... Um, Show me your stethoscope yesterday. That's one of my Facebook groups that I love. Like some nurses are just like, oh, it's a little too little too late. And it's just going to be about having to go to meetings where they try to decide how they're going to use the money. And then it turns into uh, just nothing is done about it. And my answer to that is not, I don't know how to do this, but how do we learn to do this? How do we learn to deal with this burnout, this compassion or caregivers fatigue and get to that place of being our higher selves so that our higher selves can show up for us, but also for others so that we can be that true North and be the caring and the education that is so needed out there in our population and for our communities. So keep showing up, nurses. Go to my Nurses Nurse Facebook page and subscribe, join, join my group, YouTube, the Nurses Nurse. You can subscribe. And I'm going to be putting some live uh, videos up on there to keep this going because showing up for yourself is the first step. And I really appreciate you sticking in there and listening. Appreciate all your comments and your uh, fellowship because I can't do this alone. So thanks so much. And until next week. I'm Rita Batchley, and this is Coffee with the Nurse's Nurse, well, where you'll get tips on how to put the care back in healthcare. Salute.